Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Video Adrenaline for Adobe Premiere Pro. Today, we're going to take a look at how you can integrate still photos into your Premiere Pro timeline with the very popular documentary photo effect where you do pans and scans. Now, some people call this Ken Burns effect, which personally I think is a little bit of a misnomer. It's actually his brother who invented the effect, but Ken Burns is the famous filmmaker who does documentaries and kind of pioneered this effect, or at least we should more accurately say made it popular. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do in Premiere Pro, and there are some little subtleties that make a big difference on getting it done right and just getting it done. So here's how it works. I've got a timeline here. In this case, it's a DVC Pro HD timeline, and I did that on purpose. I wanted to use some non-square pixels. Now, video shows often use non-square pixels, and that's because video cameras have flexibility of shooting different frame sizes. Still photos, though, typically come out with square pixels, and herein can lie the problem if you're using a different NLE, which gets confused. The good news, though, is that Premiere Pro is smart and knows how to handle the mixing of square and non-square pixels. All you have to do is just drop your photo into your timeline, and it will figure things out for you and compensate. Now, I'm going to zoom in here and set this shot to the duration that I want. So I want this particular shot to last about 12 seconds. There we go. And it's there. Now, if you look at the original clip, you see there's a lot more to the photo than what's showing up. This particular shot is 4,200 pixels by about 2,800 pixels, which is easily twice the size of what we need for our timeline. The good news, though, is that these extra pixels can be used for zooms and pans and all sorts of cool things that help bring the photo to life. And you're going to do that using keyframes. Now, keyframes are pretty standard if you've been using any sort of effects in Premiere Pro, but for those of you that are new to effects, or at least effects over time, here's the basic idea. With a keyframe, you say where something is at a particular point in time. So, for example, I could say at zero seconds, I stand over here. On the other hand, we can go ahead further down the line, and at five seconds, I could stand over here. And what's going to happen if I were a computer animation is I would move across the frame. It's pretty simple stuff. Well, the exact same thing holds true with our photo, and it's pretty easy to do. So let's go ahead and just grab that photo and double click so it's loaded, and we'll go under Effect Controls and twirl down the motion property. What you're going to do here is adjust where the image is. Now, I use position to set my initial starting point, and I'm going to adjust this here. And in this case, we're going to start on the Space Needle. Get that so it's framed correctly. Put that a little off to the side there. That looks pretty good. Remember, if you need to, you could turn on Safe Title Overlays. Straightforward stuff there. And you could take a look at that. Now, I've got that composed how I want. And I'm going to adjust Scale a little bit and go down from 100% to zoom out. There we go. And that looks pretty good. That's a good starting position. Now, I'm going to assign keyframes to define things. However, there's one big gotcha. You don't actually want to animate the position keyframe, especially when panning and scanning on a photo. If you do, it tends to look a little jerky. And sometimes you'll see gaps at the edges as you move it around. In fact, you want to turn to anchor point, which is the virtual center of the image. So the difference would be panning the camera around to look at the photo or locking the camera down and moving the position of the photo. I'm going to choose anchor point because it just does a better job. It's a little more professional and smooth. So we'll turn on the value here for anchor point and scale. I could then go forward into the timeline to where I want to go and adjust the scale. We're going to pull back so we see more of the picture and then adjust its anchor point. And you see how easy this is to get what you want. There we go. And we just adjust that till we get the composition we want for the frame. There we go. Come back to the beginning here and press play. And you see it does exactly what we told it to do. Over time, the anchor point and the scale values are animated. That works really well. 
If you need to, you can come on in here and actually look at the different values and see those, and that works well. And you can even right click on the keyframes and do things like auto bezier if you want to get a gentle transition in. Let's just zoom in here so we can see it a little better. Right click on that keyframe. And now we have a little bit more gentle transference. Instead of it just being a solid ramp, it's going to ramp in and ramp out to gentle changes. That worked well there for the scale. And we can go ahead and just change this to anchor point and do the same thing. Other options like continuous bezier also work well. And you should really experiment with those until you get the options you want for a nice smooth transition. And you can tweak these handles if you want to further create a gradual start and stop. There we have it, our documentary style motion control does exactly what we told it to do. If in the middle there we want to make a mid-course correction, we can do that. I'll just add a third keyframe for anchor point and tell it to tilt down a little bit there so we see more of the top of the space needle. And you see there, it's still nice and smooth. Now I don't recommend getting five or six keyframes because that's going to get too busy, but this does a nice job of filling things in. Hope you enjoyed that. It's pretty straightforward stuff. If you're interested more about learning about Photoshop and Premiere tying together, I invite you to also check out the Photoshop for Video podcast here on Creative Cow, as well as the book by the same name. For Video Adrenaline, my name is Rich Harrington. Thanks for heading on over to creativecow.net. And while you're there, be sure to check out some of the other great stuff, the tutorials and the magazines that are going to help you get more done with professional videos.